Okay, uh, going forward uh, here with this, we're going to locate those same points on these two circles. So let's come back over to here. And you can see I've got uh, I've got this line drawn. Uh, so I can copy copy it. Pop it right there. And let me check my length on the one that I had drawn here. 0.0967. Point oh nine six seven. Okay, uh, now I can do the same thing. Copy those down. And when you're when you're doing stuff like this, you really got to watch your object snaps. That you're actually snapping onto the object that you want. Okay. Uh, so let's put a a line. From that endpoint back. Do the same here. Okay. So now, now I have I have my points of tangency. Okay. So I am going to switch back over to my layer and go to my visible. And let's see. Um, it, you may find it works better to actually leave ISO mode to do this. And go line, we're going to go from, not to midpoint, but from that intersection. Uh, let me turn off ortho. To that intersection. Do the same thing here. Back to this one. So that's got my top surface. Now I need one, I need the front edge of the bottom surface. So it's going to go from that point down to this point all right so now then i'm going to take um, these two ellipses that are in white and i'm going to switch them over to my visible layer and then i'm going to turn off my zero layer and now i want to trim and you got to start you got to think about these things as being uh, solid solid bodies okay and so i know i've got this rib in the front so i can't see anything that's behind that rib okay i won't be able to see anything behind the rib but here i will see this arc as it comes around because that's where the rib intersects with this cylinder so trimming you, you kind of gotta kind of feel your way uh, through so i'm going to take out this stuff here because i i know i won't be able to see the bottom of the cylinder behind that um this is behind the cylinder so i want to take that out okay uh and we'll, we'll address more down there okay this i'm going to take out beyond that point of intersection right there and the same thing here. Won't be able to see any of that coming around at all. Okay. This I will see back down to, oh, actually where this comes across, I, I made a mistake there. So um, let me extend that back to there and it's this stuff here that you won't see okay that looks better okay now we, we kind of do the same thing over here uh, I know I can't see that I know I can't see these things in here can't see that that's behind the cylinder here it's coming up I can see it so I will take out those straight lines there this coming up won't see that nope nope uh, 
uh, we'll, we'll be able to see any of this arc where it comes around. This one I will. Uh, I, I trimmed out one too many there. Uh, no, that's right. Okay, where the cylinder joins there. And so that's how the outside edge of my, my cylinder is going to look. Let's double check and we can look in our textbook and see... Okay, yeah, so that's how it looks in the textbook there on page 378. Now, you're still going to draw these these holes in the on the inside right here, and it's it, this is just a straight hole here, but this one is a counter bore. And if, let's see what page it's on. If you flip over page uh, 389, uh, it gives you a, a little bit more information on on doing counter bores. Okay, basically what you do is you, you're going to draw your, your first circle uh, on, on your center mark. So on this center right here, you'll draw this circle, and you're going to copy it back. And that, that circle is the um, diameter 1.5. And you're going to copy it back the depth of the counter bore, which is 0 0.60. And that would be this ellipse. And then on the same center point, you'll draw the smaller ellipse, which is the 0.875. Okay. And then you'll trim those out. Let me turn that all in zero stuff. And you trim it out, only things that you would see. Okay. Be because usually in ISO mode, we don't draw hidden lines. And usually in these center, uh, excuse me, uh, working drawings like this, we usually don't put center lines either in in this view okay now what um i i came back uh i just kind of spaced back and established a a point for the rear of those two surfaces and then i started building and working my way to the front and it's all on this same same center line okay so all of these ellipses are centered on that center line. And you just kind of build it and work your way forward, okay, uh, based on the size. And then you trim out the things that you can't see. And in here, uh, I, I did the same. I, I've, I've deleted that line that went across there. But I, it, the process is the same. I established uh, a point. And I think I actually started at the front on these and started working my way back. No. I don't know. Let's see. Let me copy that down. No, I started at the back so that the back sides are flush and it worked my way forward. Okay. Um, once you're done with that, what you want to do is these uh, phantom lines that show the, the path of connections. is you want to end them on, uh, let me go back into ISO mode to be a little easier. You want to end them on the actual center point of the object, okay? And so here, uh, you can you can trim or you can move and drag them either way. Okay, and so there's a pretty much how it should look right there. All right, uh, that's what our our textbook is is kind of showing. And then you'll get you'll get that done. Then you'll go to your layout tab here for the assembly. Same thing as before. You're gonna uh, you know activate model space, set your viewport scale, center this up, and you may find you need to move these in or out a little bit. It's just when you do them, do them as a group so that you're moving them together. Um, set your scale, fill in the title block, apply the balloons here. Okay. And uh, there is a video on the on the the tutorial downloads on setting up the balloon multi-leader style, but this um, 
this template file already has it set up. So you're going to go to leaders here and instead of standard, you're going to choose the balloon. And then when you activate it and you want to make sure you're in paper space now doing this. Okay. Uh, you can click the point for your arrowhead. You're going to drag out. Of course, you're going to be on the right layer. And then an attribute pops up and you put in your number. And you just tell it OK. All right. And it puts it in there as the same, the right size, the right, and your text. And you'll fill in your, your title block down here with your parts list. OK. Uh, and I think that's... Um, Pretty much everything on, on this project. Uh, if you got questions, uh, send us an email or uh, come see us uh, in the in the drafting lab.